Up next on today's Wild West, he's known for his acclaimed rawhide braiding and his exceptional horses. We love the horse, we love to work with them, and we love the tradition. We'll visit Nate Wald at his Montana ranch. They said, I think you finally lost your mind. We'll show you a most unusual and very popular wedding venue in the middle of Montana, the Barnshin. They call it the Cowboy Breakfast. Hot cereal and pancake mix made right here in Montana. We'll take a bite and tour the factory coming up on today's Wild West. The Wild West, it's still out there. And we'll show you how to find it. This is today's Wild West. There's just nothing cooler than a baby colt in the world. Springtime in Montana, and a newborn foal is spending its first days of life on the Wild Ranch near Lodgegrass, sticking very close to mom. How old is that guy? Oh, shoot, two, three days, yeah. And if you had to catch him, good luck. As soon as they can stand, they can run away. The baby is among 70 or so horses that make their home on the ranch Nate Wald and his wife TJ call home. That little guy's gonna be roan too. Where they raise cattle with Nate's brother and pedigree American quarter horses with their son Jackson. I wanna raise a really good ranch horse. I like a horse with enough size that you can cover a lot of country, you can rope on them, you can rope big cattle on them. That little sister. Disposition too, I like horses that are friendly, that are athletic and have a lot of go, that are, are gentle, that they'll relax. You can drop the reins and they're gonna stand there and wait for you and that's what I'm trying to have is just a good all around ranch type horse. Nate's parents run a bed and breakfast on the ranch as well, which we'll visit in just a bit. You may have seen this real deal cowboy when his portrait by acclaimed Western artist Kerry Ballantyne graced the cover of Western Horseman magazine. And Cowboy Artists of America painter Lauren Entz captured what Nate is best known for, making braided rawhide cowboy gear as a member of the prestigious Traditional Cowboy Arts Association, known as TCA for short. I'm really happy when I'm doing something with my hands, whether it's riding a horse or whether it's working with string. Nate's work is prized by both working cowboys who use his braided rawhide reins, bozelles, and other gear every day, and collectors who purchase them as works of art. But whether the piece hangs on the wall of an office or a ranch tack room, it's all usable gear. Form, function, dimensions, all of those kinds of things, they're going to be the same because I won't compromise that that thing should work on a horse because that's what I'm building. Nate got bit by the rawhide braiding bug while working on a ranch outside Bozeman near the end of his college days. Got a book and started fooling around and braiding up some simple stuff and trying different knots and things. When I graduated from, from college, I just came back to the ranch and, and just kept braiding from there on out. Nate's been at it ever since. And this is the first pair of uh, Rommel reins that I ever built. I really got interested in it, and you know, I didn't have any spare time much anymore. I, I was at my bench trying to get better and finding people that knew more than I did and, and trying to see what they were doing. The technique of braiding is relatively simple. I mean, you can teach somebody to do that fairly quickly. But there are no shortcuts to mastering the craft of creating braided rawhide cowboy gear. To make a, a braid that's consistent and even and really well done, tight enough, but not too tight, each string is as pulled as tight as the, the one above it, that takes a lot of muscle memory and just a lot of hours of doing that same thing over and over again. I think where some people get off track is they want to do what somebody like me can do after 30 years right away and it doesn't work that way. Rawhide is not leather. It's braided string made from a raw hide, and Nate makes his own. When you make the rawhide, you have quality control from the start. Ah, uh, let's just put it right over here. There's a lot to making good rawhide and cutting good string. It starts, of course, with a raw hide, like this one dropped off at the ranch while we were visiting. Nate either soaks the hide in lye to remove the hair or scrapes it off as the hide is stretched out to dry which is a, you know, a simple old school technique, but it makes 
a unique hide for working stuff that I kind of like the looks of. So that becomes this. Yep. Either way, this is the result. You've got a raw hide. A board stiff raw hide. Dry After out, being yeah. re-moistened overnight. I'll go round and round one of these with a draw. draw the hide is cut into strips. Round and round and cut this whole hide up into a strip, maybe that wide, like this. This would be a circle of hide cut into a, a string we call a soga. That soga then goes through several more cuts in refinement. So for thickness, you'll use what we call a, a splitter. Then we end up with, uh, this is what the string that I'll actually braid something with. Or tie. And then the real work begins. And then I braided 16 strings over the top of that to cover and to make that all uniform. To braid that raw hide into reins, head stalls, and other gear. Probably 20 hours and a hack or more. That whether for working cowboys or cowboy art could all be used on a horse. Everything revolves around the horse. We love the horse and we, we love to work with them and we, we love the tradition that all of these things are, are all part of. And so when we can preserve that, then we've, we've done something. Braiding is meticulous, time-consuming, detail-oriented work, but for Nate, it's never boring. When people learn you braid rawhide, they're like, oh, I couldn't do that, I'm, I'm way too impatient. But to me, when I'm at my bench, that's when I'm the most relaxed. Rawhide braiding is among the old time cowboy skills that not long ago were in danger of dying out. When I first got interested in rawhide 30 years ago, man, you could count on one hand and probably less guys that were doing it. Even fewer of those guys would show anybody anything. And it was that way with saddle makers. It was that way like the silversmiths and the bit and spur guys. And those trades were slowly being lost. Since its founding in 1998, the Traditional Cowboy Arts Association has done much to turn that around. Through its annual exhibition and sale that celebrates these crafts as fine collectible art and mentoring and educational programs to pass these skills on to the next generation. Everything I know, I'm willing to tell anybody that asks. I mean, I get phone calls and emails and things all the time, and uh, I don't feel like I have any secret at all other than that I've just worked worked hard at it. If you like today's Wild West, you'll love great ranches of today's Wild West. See the first chapter and order your signed copy at todayswildwest.com. Well, this is a Jay Adcock. Nate uses the gear he makes and that of other craftsman friends that he often trades with. That's a uh, Dale Harwood. Dale Harwood. Yep. His tack room where he keeps his saddles, bridles, and other gear is a fascinating collection of some of the finest equipment a horseman could own. We put some of that gear to use as we saddle up for a ride on the ranch. Nate needs to check out some cows, and I'm checking out the scenery. This unspoiled Montana ranch is magnificently beautiful, and Nate's horses have something special to ride. I'm no expert, I'm always learning, but this is about the nicest trained horse I've ever sat on. <laughs> I mean, well, that's a compliment, thanks. Those 70 horses on the ranch at any given time include two stallions, 20 broodmares, and others in various stages of life and training. And Nate's rawhide quarter horses are earning a good reputation in Montana's ranching community. They like those colts a lot because they, they're, they're athletic and can do the job, but they're not something that's stupid and gonna run you off a cliff or, or you know, buck all the time, they just go to work. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, my wife and I will be spending the night at the Wald Ranch Bed and Breakfast, run by Nate's parents, which always includes dinner as well. It's 50 miles to a restaurant. And some of them will say that's why we came here, because <laughs> we see, saw that you'd get a homemade me meal. Richard has been coming here from Europe for 23 years. It's the country, it's the horses, it's the way of living. When he comes, it's almost like he's back home again. <laughs> Richard has been grandfathered in for horseback riding, which the B&B no longer offers. But there's plenty else to see and do. A lot of them like to just hike up in the hills there. And so they do a lot of just seeing what's on the ranch. It's a cozy, comfortable, Western-themed place to stay. And while it seems far from the world, the world comes here to visit. If this you know table could uh, talk. His home away from home also looks like a Western art gallery starring the Wald family. 
the perfect subject for a Western artist like Carrie Ballantyne. Nate and TJ's nearby home is also richly decorated with both Western art, starring the family, and fine braided rawhide gear. That is just a stunning headstall. During our visit, we discover TJ is an artist as well. Uh, this is what I love to do, yeah, horse gear. Creating beautiful beaded bracelets, jewelry, and decorated bridles, some with a bit of help from Nate. I just put a series of them to break up the beadwork. Everything I bead, I like Nate to put something on. Is he take a little persuasion? He's really <laughs> Between the beading, braiding, horses and cattle, and the B&B, &B, it's a nice life in Montana for the Walds, their guests, and the horses lucky enough to grow up here. It's not a barn, it's not a mansion, it's the Barnchen, a place where people come from all over the country for that very special event here in the middle of Montana. We'll show you coming up on Today's Wild West. If you like Today's Wild West, you'll love great rides of Today's Wild West. See the first chapter and order your signed copy at todayswildwest.com. They said, I think you finally lost your mind now. In the middle of Montana, in the middle of the prairie, sits a huge and somewhat mysterious red structure unlike anything you've ever seen. Well, I just want a barn for my horses and he wanted a shop. It's kind of amazing. It's, it's really kind of a funny story. That's really what began as a simple barn for Renee and Dave Miller became the Barnchen, a destination wedding, vacation, and meeting site that attracts people from all over the country. And it all happened by accident. You wanted a horse barn and you wanted a wood shop. Yep, and we wanted a place for the grandkids, grandkids to stay. And that extra bedroom became three beautiful, fully furnished, Western-themed apartments, housed in a colossal three-story structure with outdoor decks featuring magnificent views of this part of the American West. With two luxury cabins built just steps away, there's plenty of room for at least 40 adults to spend the night. But we didn't have intentions of anything like it is now. And What are you doing? And I just kept saying, I don't know. So in the winter, this is your wood shop. Yes. The Barnchen's ground floor is home to a huge banquet and party room. It's a saloon or a stable, whatever you want to call it. And the tack room where the Millers store their saddles converts to a bar, complete with swinging doors that add to the Western vibe. And the massive structure looks out on a vast lawn that is the perfect picturesque setting for outdoor weddings and other events. We hadn't planned it, but it's been a tremendous fun. We just sent our horses to get trained. Dave and Renee can even hitch up their horses to pull their carriage, delivering the bride in style for the ceremony. Now we're just doing it ourselves and learning as we go. And to me, it's fascinating. Plus, the property includes a first-class outdoor bathroom, shower, and laundry facility for additional guests staying in campers or tents that the ranch has plenty of room to accommodate. One wedding, we had, what, 40 campers at least. Over 40. 40 or 50 campers. Wedding guests can party until the cows come home without ever waking up the neighbors, because there are no neighbors. And when the party's over, no one has to drive. But how does something like this just happen? And I was up early in the morning about three o'clock and thinking about designing a barn for her because I'm always building something. And Renee and Dave run a cattle and sheep ranch with Dave's brother east of Harleton and have some other business interests in town. Coco. Coco. Stormy. Breve. Mocha. Coffee. With her kids grown and gone, Renee can finally indulge her love of Rocky Mountain horses, a beautiful gated breed that ironically originated in the Appalachian Mountains. Along with ranching, Dave, who studied architecture, has built homes and all kinds of other projects over the years. He was visiting family in Idaho when he got an idea. I was sitting by a lake, looking down at the lake about three in the morning, just kind of had a picture in my mind of this building. So I sat down at the table and I sketched out a sketch of this building. Back in Montana, perhaps a month later, Renee was surprised to come home one October day. She had no idea the size or scope I had in mind. To find construction underway. And that slab was poured on the ground and I remember her words, she says, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be yeah. this big. Dave never actually created a blueprint. And I have the ability to do that. I just chose not to. The entire plan was in his head, which kept evolving. I saw a demolition of a big building. Even after construction began. 
tearing out great big old blue lamb fur beans, old John Deere dealership, and I just pulled in there, actually had a trader on, and asked them what they were going to do with these beans, and they said, they're going to the dump. I said, would you mind loading them on? So I changed the plan at that time to fit the these beams, we brought them in, we cleaned them up. Neighbors who saw the big building going up weren't shy in expressing their doubts. I literally had multiple people come down here and just shake their heads and say, you're nuts. Even the crew doing the work didn't really know what they were building. I chose not to tell people what I was gonna build, just do this and this, and I draw them a little sketch, and they just do what I asked at the time. Several people thinking, you're crazy, that won't work, this won't work. But when it all come together, I think people then understood what I was seeing in my head. The Barnson's beautiful three-story porch was also improvised. Those magnificent logs were once power line poles. We planed them, put them down to the uh, cedar and made them look like they were hand-shaved, which they were. We took planers and shavers and redid them and then stained them and built all this front from repurposed power poles off the ranch here. While construction was underway, Renee was working on the decorating. It was a lot of fun to decorate. We got all the colors. In a most creative way. We wanted it classy Western. We went Craigslist, eBay, antique stores, and just gathered up things for each room that we thought would be neat in each room and found a lot of interesting antiques that all have stories and things like that. Dave's woodworking skills turned other people's discarded junk into beautiful furnishings, like this table. Yeah, and it was all destroyed. We bought it at a second-hand store, but I kind of could see what I wanted to do and built the middle for it off and then put a, new, put a new oil finish on it. We finished it with oil. In fact, Dave built almost everything you see. He made all the cabinets, the trim, and the Western-style shelves, plus the wagon wheel chandeliers and the bathroom sink. Made you look old. Renee's Western decorating is inspired creativity. Just some of them really were very unique finds. It was fun. That was a really fun part. Just a matter of looking here and there and say, oh, that'll fit here and that'll fit here. Yet all along, Dave and Renee never intended to host visitors. No. Oh, no. no. <laughs> we just yeah. built it for the family. But that changed when a close friend was killed in an ATV accident. After nearly two years of work, built to code and inspected, the barn room was largely complete and the Millers offered to host the funeral. Later that summer, they had their first paying guests when a corporation booked to stay for a meeting. Then a local couple asked if they could rent the place for a wedding. David and Renee never really had any intention of getting into the hospitality business, but once one wedding was held out here, word of mouth spread. And today, weddings are booked a year in advance. Along the way, Dave and Renee kept the skeptical town involved, holding a contest to name their new creation and offering a free stay as the grand prize. And we got a thousand names. And one lady said, well, it's that Miller Mansion they're building out there, but I said, no, it's a barn, and then they came up with the barn shin, and she won. <laughs> Throughout it all, Dave and Renee are having a blast, especially hosting that most important event of a young couple's life. It's been so much fun. The people are nice, and you cry at every wedding for somebody you don't even know. Plus, the barn shin is still a barn. And Renee and Dave take time to have fun themselves, enjoying evening horseback rides on their beautiful property. God has just blessed us in a way that he's trusted us with a little piece of this earth, and we, we like to share it with others. They call it the Cowboy Breakfast, hot cereal and pancake mix made right here in Montana. We'll take a bite and tour the factory, coming up on today's Wild West. If you like today's Wild West, you'll love our Western wall art. See our beautiful images by clicking on photography at todayswildwest.com. Just like Montana, pure and simple. They call it the cowboy cereal, cream of the West, hot cereal, plus pancake mix, snacks, and other products made from start to finish in Montana. There we go. From the planting and harvesting of the grain to the packaging and shipping Super. from the tiny town of Harleton. This is the roasted wheat. All made from three basic ingredients. Roasted ranch oats, and then the seven grain. So it all happens right in this room? Right here, yep. Well, it's pretty simple. Start to finish. <laughs> it all began more than 100 years ago, back in 1914. An implement salesman was making an early morning call to see a rancher when his wife invited the visitor in for breakfast. 
And what she did was to take some wheat and grind it in her coffee grinder, roast it in the oven, and served him the best hot cereal he thought he'd ever eaten. He said, I could sell that. Cream of the West was born. One of the original owners wasn't terribly original, and they got sued. At first, it wasn't known as the cowboy cereal. That changed when the packaging did in the 1920s. They started putting a Western motif on the box, and people started calling it the cowboy cereal. Over the decades, Cream of the West updated that cowboy image from time to time. So when people come to trade shows and we have a big banner that has all those boxes, we'll say, well, which one did you grow up eating? In the early 1990s, Billings artist Joe Hines created the current series of cowboy portraits that grace the packaging, including a cowgirl featured on the cover of the organic seven grain cereal box. We're proud of that. That's our newest addition to the product line. She's 100% organic, seven grain, and she's joined the boys as the first cowgirl to be a Cream of the West product. Since its beginning more than 100 years ago, Cream of the West has added a number of other items to its product line, including a great tasting seven grain pancake mix that you really just have to try. Good stuff. But we have some outfitters that take them because it's a just add water. So they can take them out camping or outfitting and add water and that's all you need. So they're easy. Cream of the West also offers its Montana morning whole bean coffee and Montana Crunch Trail Mix Snack, which makes a great parfait when mixed with yogurt and a tasty treat right out of the bag. It's good, tastes good, it's good for you. The cowboy cereal has fans all over the world and has been shipped to Dubai in the Middle East, Japan, and all across America. One of our most popular is three cowboys and a rope. And all it is is our three cereals, pure and simple, and it's one of the most popular because people love our cereal. Gift boxes are especially popular, which include locally produced bee love and honey and mussel shell mud coffee. Named after the mussel shell river that flows right through Harlow. Offering a taste of Montana for those who perhaps wish they could be here. It's served generations of Montanans for the last hundred years. And you don't even have to saddle up a horse to ride to town. Unlike a hundred years ago, cowboy cereal and all the other tasty products made here in Harlowton can be ordered online and shipped to your ranch, wherever that may be. Those are good. That's it for now. We're back next time with more cool stuff from today's Wild West. I'm Mark Bedore. We'll see you down the trail. For more information on the people and places featured in today's Wild West, or to order show DVDs and books, visit todayswildwest.com. Funding for today's Wild West provided by the Leggett Foundation.